Walking into this movie, I really had no particular expectations. But in a movie world filled with sequels, prequels and remakes that often don't show a lot of creativity, this movie called Argyle is actually a fresh breath of air. Because you really see a fresh flow of creativity in this one. You have seen action movies with spies such as James Bond, Jason Bourne, Jack Ryan's Shadow Recruit or action comedies with agents such as Hitman's Bodyguard or Red Notice. But in that respect, this movie really stands on its own. This movie may always be more known for Dua Lipa's acting debut rather than anything else, but I think it is an action movie of high creativity from the same actor that gave us Kingsman's Secret Service. You will really see shades of that movie in here, although you might not have as iconic moments such as the scenes with Rasputin, but actually one of my favorite scenes by the end of the movie is when the main character played by Bryce Dallas Howard skates on the oil. And although it of course is unrealistic that you can do that, it is exactly what this is built to be, a ridiculous movie in the first place, but not much better than for instance in the flawed Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. That's also one of the reasons why I feel this is a very underrated action comedy. One other reason why I feel it is underrated is because of the high quality acting performances in particularly from Sam Rockwell and Brian Cranston. But it's the latter one that steals the show as the chief villain here, and people talk about Austin Butler being impressive as Fade Rotha in June Part 2, but then it clearly must have missed Brian's performance as Ritter who just nails it right down to the bow, both when he tries not to be the villain and effectively is the villain. That is really so excellent from him, and I think it's probably one of the best villain performances since Christopher Waltz in Spectre. Okay, yes, this movie is based on a book, and it may be a little drag towards the end, I can't agree with that. But the way the movie is done and the structure of it is quite cool when the actual characters of this book comes alive. And they do something like three stories at the same time, which looks like what they did in Severance. That is a high radiant piece of creativity. This feels way more exaggerated than the book and that's something that's right after my heart. Because I feel when everybody needs to make movies almost 100% close to the book, you just miss the room for creativity, which is not the case here. The movie feels stylish in the action scenes and it also has a quite good comedy that feels natural in the scenes between the characters and that includes the whole cast although of course some characters are written better than others but the way it is done with the writer's story coming alive in its way is something you see in very few movies these days and in that respect it at times looks more like Secret Window. That's why I feel this one has a lot of things going for it that a lot of action comedies these days fail to do as they feel way too generic. The ridiculous scenes could of course have been made over the top again but as the building block when that guy comes onto the train and further from that the movie progresses very good and takes you on an entertaining roller coaster ride. I really like this as a spy universe in most of the characters like for instance Samuel L. Jackson who always spews his excellence into this one like always are very well casted and it's a spy universe built with care and intrigues. They really managed to create tension excitement and the events are very well explained, so I would say they have done a rightfully good job with the material here. That may at times feel random and it may at times feel somewhat weird or strange, but the entertainment value in this one is at times shockingly impressive. And I say that with real and true honesty, that's why I will give it a 7 out of 10.